Well, I agree. I think there's a lot of concern regarding the impending rate hike. And with that in mind, I think people will be moving their funds from the local markets to the U.S., to the safe havens. So that alone is already a cause for concern for the local investors. If you add the other local um, occurrences that are happening right now, there's, mo there's more volatility involved. So rather than uh, invest with the Philippines, these foreign investors might either go to the U.S. or go to other countries in Southeast Asia. Here we're taking a look at uh, where we could possibly end up. So 92 so far, 92 billion pesos is what the PSE has raised. If we take that to 185, that pretty much matches where we were at 2015. Not much of a growth there. And again, you know, if you talk about uh, weak market activity, we can't discount the peso as well, which is still sitting at multi-year lows. How do you account for that weakness? Well, again, it's probably one thing, the rate hike, people moving their money out. And the foreign investor, they don't like volatility. You're, you're already getting hit in terms of your returns. We're pr um, well, let me just break it down for you. We're pricey as it is mm. compared to the rest of Southeast Asia. You want to go to a market that will uh, give you value for the money, you'll probably go to other markets nearby. That's why. Number two, there's a rate hike coming. Okay, Like it or not, that's a factor that everybody's considering. So if I don't want to be in... Uh, developing markets, I'll probably, I don't, if I don't want to be in emerging markets, I'll probably be in developing markets where I will, probably won't be hit as hard. And last but not the least, uh, you have our, uh, our president um, who is making such statements. There is maybe some concern in terms of the foreign investors. Um, these guys, they like stability. They don't like pretty much any noise. When it, every time you put uh, a next factor or a new ingredient to the mix, they will be concerned. So with that, that's probably why there are a lot of fun flows And this out. time that X factor comes back to all the, the president's rhetoric against all of these international bodies. We do have one big uh, IPO coming up in the pipeline. That's Filipina Shell trying to raise uh, just under 30 billion pesos. But if you take a look at the pricing, it's, it's, it's costing it, uh, it's pricing it at about uh, 90 pesos a piece, which is uh, quite expensive when you compare it to the rest of the boards. What's your assessment of this? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, it's one of the few types of stocks in, um, in the PSE. Um, it's an oil play, basically. What it does is it, uh, it entices some investors to come into the market. That's what it wants to do. Um, if there's going to be a demand, I don't know at this price. It's a little steep if you ask me right now. That is also what we've heard from the other analysts. But you like it because it's got uh, the oil factor to it. And oil, actually, if we take a look at where prices are right now, hovering at three-month highs. That's right. basically, uh, I guess we can attribute that to optimism on the OPEC deal. I agree. I agree. I guess the problem with the Philippines at this stage is that the BSP has worked in price assumptions of between 45 to 50 for oil. And already, we might go past that. Take a look at the international benchmark there, Brent. Could this then, if oil does spike, could this uh, cause a bit of an inflationary spike for the Philippines? Well, logically, if oil does go up, it will cause some inflation. Is it a cause for concern? I think that our regulator, the BSP, is, has put safeguards in place. It will be able to move things along accordingly. So all is steady on that front, nothing to worry. Lastly, Robert, I want to ask you about your stock picks. You talked about uh, overvaluation a bit earlier. And I'm take, I took a look at your stock picks. You like Metro Pacific, right. Ayala Land, and First Gen. Yes. And if you take a look at the price earnings ratio for these stocks, they're also not terribly cheap. Take a look at Ali at forward, forward price earnings ratio at about 28 times earnings. How do you account for this? Well, any Ayala firm is quite expensive. I think that's the story there. But if you look at the story behind these stocks, this is probably what's driving up the valuations. MPI, it's an infrastructure play. What's happening in the country right now, the, go the government is open to, even o to open unsolicited bids. Um, we want to build a lot of things. So we need a lot of things. MPI will benefit from that. And in line with that, so if you're building, 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 and there are a lot of infrastructure projects around, which real estate firm will stand to benefit? The one that has uh, developments near these infrastructure projects. That's Ayala land, okay? So these two actually... They're, um, they're co-related. So yeah. what about First Gen? Well, What's I, the story there? The story there is that they're creating um, power supply, and I do believe that we need it in the near future. You build more infrastructure, you build more developments, you will need power to supply to these new developments. 
That's FJ. And again, it feeds us back into the whole infrastructure story. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks very much for your time. Robert Ramos, Chief Investment Officer at Union Bank.